Good afternoon. We welcome all parishioners and guests as we celebrate the 19th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please place your sacrificial offering in the collection baskets at the baptismal font and by the handicapped entrances. You can also mail them in, put them in the drop box at the parish center, or donate online. Next weekend's second collection is for the church in Africa. Your support helps fund outreach programs, the education of clergy and lay ministers, as well as schools that provide religious education for children. Thank you for your generous support. There will be altar server training on Saturday, August 20th for current servers and those wishing to become altar servers. Details can be found in the bulletin. Extraordinary ministers of the Eucharist training will be held in the church on Saturday, August 27th from 10 a.m. until noon. Anyone wishing to serve in this beautiful ministry should call the office to register. Faith formation registration for all K through 12th grade students is available on our website. Staff will be in the narthex after all masses this weekend to help register students for family faith formation, first communion, youth group, confirmation, and sacraments for adults. Your time and talent are needed. Speak with Faith Formation staff in the Narthex after Mass today about serving with children, youth, or adult studies. Teachers, classroom assistants, youth small group leaders, Bible study leaders, office assistants, and others are needed, and training is provided. Registration is open on the parish website for the fall men's and women's welcome retreats. These days of renewal, hosted by your parish family, are designed to help you reclaim clarity and purpose in your life, gain a fresh perspective, and form meaningful relationships in the parish community. Printed bulletins are at the stewardship tables in the narthex and the handicapped exits. Details on faith enrichment opportunities and events can be found there and on our website. Be sure to take one as you leave Mass. Our celebrant for today's Mass is Father Orsi. Good afternoon and welcome to St. Agnes. Please rise and join in singing, We Gather Together. He chastens and hastens his will to make known the wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name, he forgets not his own. Beside us to guide us, our God with us joining, whose kingdom calls all to the love which endures. So from the beginning, the flight we were winning, you, Lord, were at our side, all glory. 
glory be yours. You think there are a lot of people in the parking lot waiting to come in? I predicted it. I said, you know, it's going to rain about 10 to 4 when we're trying to get into the parking lot. So uh, we have some people coming in. What I'll do is I'll tell you just briefly where I was last weekend. We'll give them a chance to run between the raindrops. Okay. A lot of people want to know, Father, where were you last weekend? Were you on vacation? Well, yes and no. I left here on Saturday morning to go to Fort Worth, Texas, where it's 104 degrees. And mod on heat, I'll tell you, all right? Now, why did I go to Fort Worth, Texas? Well, because I had to baptize a baby. Now, guess what the baby's name was? Michael Orsi Devine. Now, it's a good thing the baby doesn't look Italian. I might be in some trouble. Okay? <laughs> in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of good will. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts 
the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The night of the Passover was known beforehand to our fathers, that with sure knowledge of the oaths in which they put their faith, they might have courage. Your people awaited the salvation of the just and the destruction of their foes. For when you punished our adversaries, in this you glorified us whom you had summoned. For in secret the holy children of the good were offering sacrifice and putting into effect with one accord the divine institution. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, faith is the realization of what is hoped for and evidence of things not seen. Because of it, the ancients were well attested. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was to go. By faith, he sojourned in the promised land as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and maker is God. By faith, he received power to generate, even though he was past the normal age, and Sarah herself was sterile, for he thought that the one who had made the promise was trustworthy. So it was that there came forth from one man, himself as good as dead, descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and as countless as the sands on the seashore. All these died in faith, 
They did not receive what had been promised, but saw it and greeted it from afar, and acknowledged themselves to be strangers and aliens on earth. For those who speak thus show that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land from which they had come, they would have had opportunity to return. But now they desire a better homeland, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. And he who had received the promises was ready to offer his only son, of whom it was said, Through Isaac, descendants shall bear your name. He reasoned that God was able to raise even from the dead, and he received Isaac back as a symbol. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy for where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like servants who await their master's return from wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared, for an hour will come that you do not expect, and the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, Who then is that faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, My master is delayed in coming and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish the servant severely and assign him a place with the unfaithful. That servant who knew his master's will but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will shall be beaten severely. And the servant who was ignorant of his master's will but acted in a way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. One who is given much, much is expected. And the one who is given even more, even much more, 
is expected. Now, who is Jesus talking about? Us. You. And much more, he's talking about me. Jesus has given us tremendous gifts, the gift of faith. We see the truth, and we are called then not only to speak the truth, but to live out the truth. However, we live in a world which denies the truth. The evil one has gained a foothold in our world, and perhaps he is showing his flaws, his fangs, his venom more than ever in our present day. Satan distorts reality. He blinds us to the truth. He corrupts our minds. It's only those who know the truth who can fight the evil one who's attacking us every single day. Let me give you some examples of how the evil one is attacking, distorting, lying. He's called the father of darkness, the prince of lies, the prince of lies, the father of darkness, because he lies. He tries to convince people that he's right and those who know the truth are wrong. His goal is to destroy our immortal souls. His goal is to conquer the people of this world and gain him for his dark kingdom. Let's talk about some of the things that are distortions, lies, pe people into darkness, confusion, where they destroy themselves and destroy other people. A few months back, we had a hearing of a woman who was appointed to the Supreme Court. She was asked during her hearings, can you tell us what a woman is? The response was, I'm not a biologist. Distortion of reality. We all know what a woman is. It's an X and a Y gene. Can't say that anymore, can we? We don't know what a woman is. Recently, we were told that um, we were in a recession. Oh no, I beg your pardon, we're not in a recession. I don't know what we're in, but the definition of a recession was what? Two negative quarters in a row. Now, well, we're not. We just change the definition. We do that with everything. We just change the definition, make it what we want it to be. I was at the hospital. There's now a sign up that says, please tell us your preferred pronoun. So that we have to recognize someone who is either one sex or the other sex as not being of that sex, but being something that they make up in their heads. I looked at the sign, I said, please, just call me father, we'll save all the problems. <sighs> to show you that this is of the evil one, and this evil one permeating our society, I saw advertised a bikini. 
called the prayer bikini. You know what it says on the personal parts of the female anatomy? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's what it says. Adidas is putting that out. Is that tolerable? You think that if they dared propose that to the Muslim community, that that would gain any traction? I don't think so. I think there might be a repeat of 9-11 if they did something like that, insulting Mohammed. A lot of Christians keep quiet. We keep quiet about everything. Why? Oh, well, we're afraid. People might not think that we're politically correct enough. Or maybe we think, well, times have just changed, you know. The truth changes, you know, from day to day, whatever people want it to be. You might want to be woke. And therefore, you might go along with the lies, the distortions, the corruption that is taking place amongst us in our minds, our hearts, and in our souls. I said, you've been given much. Much has been given to you. And I'm talking to you because much has been given to me. You're hearing about, be prepared. You don't know when the Lord is coming for us or when the end of the world is going to happen. And scripture tells us it indeed, it indeed will happen. We just don't know exactly when. I dare not make any predictions, but I know that Jesus is coming and he must be very mad. There is a distortion of just about everything. We give new names to things to make them sound acceptable. There's now a piece of legislation going to the Senate. It's called the Respect Marriage Bill, Respect Marriage Act. It just passed the Congress. Every Democrat and 47 Republicans voted for it. Well, you know what it does? It codifies the Supreme Court opinion in Obergefell versus Hodges, which said that same-sex marriage is somehow found in the Constitution. It's not. It's the same situation that we just came through with Abortion, it's not found in the Constitution. And if you are simply talking about legality, abortion, as well as marriage, it belongs to the states. If we're talking simply on a constitutional level, we're not going to argue that now. But what else is contained in this piece of legislation now finding itself in the Senate. It is detrimental to the church, not just the Catholic church, but to any church that wants to hold on to the teachings of sacred scripture and the constant tradition of the church. So if it indeed gets codified, it means that those vendors who service weddings, florists and bakers and catering halls, whatever the case may be, that by law, they would have to service same-sex marriages or even polymorous marriages. That means polygamy under the law. And that is a limitation on religious freedom. That's a limitation on religious freedom. By law, a vendor would have to provide services for those weddings, those events, which they find contrary to their faith. 
It also undermines adoption laws and foster care laws that are present in the states, but these laws would force religious people and maybe even religious ceremonies, religious services, to conform to the law which says this is a constitutional right. It's now going before the Senate. It needs 60 votes to pass. I want you to write to Senator Scott and to Senator Rubio. I doubt that they would go along with this. They know the danger it is to religious freedom. But if you come from another state, please write to your senator. This is an affront against the church. It's an affront against religious freedom. It's an affront against the truth. Where God created us male and female, and that marriage is for a man and a woman, the basic foundation stone of our society, which is designed to propagate God's family and give the children born of that union a home that is fully emotionally balanced. It's a relationship where people are complementary, male and female, complementarity. That is what makes for a healthy home. If you wonder why we have so much problem with children in our society today is because that home unit has been broken and people think that there's nothing wrong with it anymore. But there is. And anytime we see some kind of a horrendous crime, go back and look at the home life of the perpetrator. And invariably you're going to see there's a problematic home life there. This is an attack against God's creation, male and female. It's an attack against God's creation of marriage. It's right in the scriptures, male and female, he created them. That's why a man leaves father and mother, two become one flesh. It's an attack against civil society. Right, to your senators. And if your congressman was foolish enough to vote for this respect for marriage piece of legislation, you should tell him how disappointed, or her, how disappointed you are. Because all it does is adds to the confusion and the degradation that is taking place in our society. One further thing I'm going to mention to you today. You've heard of the Affordable Care Act. Some of us know it as Obamacare. This act is now under certain areas of revision. There's a section 1552, I believe it is. You can go home and look it up if you wish. But this uh, Obamacare is being reinterpreted by Health and Human Services. Now, Health and Human Services is an administrative agency. Some of you, maybe you've studied law, you know about administrative law. A law is passed on this level, and then these administrative agencies begin to interpret that law. And now the law, according to Javier Becerra, should be changed, forcing, forcing hospitals of faith Catholic hospitals and doctors to perform sex change operations, the mutilation of especially the young who are psychosexually confused. Catholic hospitals, Catholic doctors would come under that law, and if they refused to perform those operations, they suffer civil penalties, the destruction of Catholic hospitals. Please let it be known to your Congress men and women, let it be known to your senators that you are aware of this evil being perpetrated 
in our country. The damage being done to young people, the damage being done to families, you know about it because I am fulfilling my obligation. The one who has been, been given much, much more is expected. The Lord is coming. Sometimes you might think to ourselves, what good is it going to do? You do your job. God's going to take care of you. You do your job. You are faithful to his word. You're faithful to the moral teachings of Christianity. You have faith in Jesus Christ. God will take care of you. God will take care of you. There is a scene in the book of Revelation. You know, as, as a, a younger man, I never thought too highly of the book of Revelation. We knew it, and I guess most of us remember the apocalypse, the apocalypse. And it talks about the end times, and a, a lot of it is uh, 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 based on some of the things that were going on during the early Christian era in the Roman Empire. A lot of the imagery in there might be strange to us. But that book is filled with truth. That book should be read and studied because it tells us about our obligations and how God is going to take care of his people who are under siege, and we are under siege. We're under siege. The evil one is attacking us. The eighth chapter, there is a very powerful scene. An angel in heaven, eighth chapter, verses two and three. The angel is holding a bowl filled with charcoal, lit charcoal burning hot, glowing. And the imagery is the prayers of God's people going up into heaven and being placed in that bowl where incense would be placed. It's the prayer of God's people, the church being persecuted, under attack by the evil one. And then as the scene completes itself, that bowl is dumped upon the earth when God's just about had it. He dumps that bowl on the earth. And for those who disobeyed him, for those who took his law lightly, there is retribution. And for those who remain faithful, there is vindication. Remain faithful to Almighty God. Know that those who are in league with the evil one, they will suffer God's retribution. And be sure that if you remain faithful, you will be vindicated and share eternal life when the master returns for an accounting. God love you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, hear us now as we make the following petitions in the name of the Lord Jesus. For the church, may we cultivate lifelong attitudes of faith and readiness as disciples of Christ, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may they be wise in their decision-making, always striving to bring peace and justice to our world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community of faith, may we turn to Jesus for the motivation to continue believing, hoping, and reaching out in love and compassion to all, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering from natural disasters and severe weather events throughout the world, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and terminally ill, especially those mentioned in our parish bulletin, may they feel Christ's comfort and healing, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they come to share in the fullness of the risen Lord. In a special way at this liturgy, we pray for the Shelton and Chacho families, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We take time to remember our own intentions. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, we place these petitions in the hands of Jesus, knowing anything we ask in his name will be granted through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing Servant Song. What do you want of me, Lord? Where do you want me to serve you? Where can I sing your praises? I am your song. Pray, my beloved in Christ, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered 
and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full, are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes, who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 
At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. I pray to you. Please join in singing, We Are Many Parts. We are many We are all one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. 
share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed, one the love that we share, one our hope in despair, one the cross that we bear. God of all, we look to you. We would be your servants true. Let us be your love to all the world. We are many parts. We are one body. And the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed, one the love that we share, one our hope in despair. On the cross that we bear. So my pain is pain for you, and your joy is my joy too. All is brought together in the Lord. We are many. We are all one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one indeed, one the love that we share. One our hope in despair, one the cross that we bear. All you seekers, great and small, seek the greatest gift of all. If you love, then you will know the We are many parts, we are one body, and the gifts we have, we are given to share. May the spirit of love make us one in One the love that we share, one our hope in despair, one the cross that we Those watching on live stream at home may join in the spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Eucharist. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Your brothers and sisters in Christ who have been commissioned to bring the body of Christ to the sick, homebound, and hospitalized, remind them that in our prayers we look forward to the day when they will return to celebrate with us at the table of the Lord. God bless you. Well, now we have a special occasion. Lovely couple, Don and Barbara Berry, are celebrating 60 years of marriage. So, could you please come up? Okay, I'm gonna stand right here. Are you sure you wanna do this again? <laughs> I'm going to give you another 60. How's that? Okay, come up closer. And that way, sure, all the graces land upon you. You've done a good job taking care of them. God bless you. It's been tough. <laughs> she says, it's been tough. Well, She's working on the same thing. <laughs> Let us pray. Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your holy name. In the beginning, you made man and woman so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise blessed the union of Don and Barbara so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness upon them today. Amid the joys and struggles of their life, you have preserved the union between them. Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace so that they may always rejoice in the gift of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. We are taking it for dinner. <laughs> McDonald's. No, we're getting pizza with, <laughs> with our two kids and well, their family. With all the toppings. Yeah. Okay, yeah. have a wonderful <laughs> evening. God <laughs> bless you. Father. Congratulations. God Many God. more. Thank you. <laughs> and now it's time for the March of the Munchkins. Any little one who has not received First Holy Communion may come forward for a special blessing. Munchkins, where are you? Here comes the Munchkins. Let us pray. Oh, I got some more stuff to do. Wait, what blessing? Oh, I don't know if I should do this. Oh, I don't want to go back to school. All right, sit down. <laughs> I mean, you know, when I was, you know, in school, and, you know, school was going to start on Monday, and I was going like, if the pastor said I can give you a blessing, you know, for Monday, boo, boo. Anyway, uh, anybody going back to school? Who's going back to school? You're going to, you wish you, well, you're going to be a teacher. I got to go back on Monday, too, to uh, Newman. Monday, I got to go back to Newman. My age, still going to school, high school. I didn't do well, so they left me back. All right, look, I mean, Donna, you and Barbara going back on Monday? <laughs> All right, look, Julian, enjoy it. Come here, Walter boys, come here, come here, come, come, come. come. They're going back, so we're going to give them extra blessings. Come on, Michael. Come on. You happy about going back? 
You're an honest man. Let us pray. God of wisdom and might, we praise you for the wonder of our being, for mind and body and spirit. Be with your children as they begin a new school year. Bless them and their teachers and staff. Give them strength and grace as their bodies grow, wisdom and knowledge to their minds as they search for understanding, and peace and zeal to their hearts. Keep all students and educators safe and well. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Julian's going to be with me, right? All right, good. All right. Okay, let's pray. May the communion of your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm us in the light of your truth through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Please join in singing, sent forth by God's blessing. Send forth by God's blessing, our true faith confessing, the people of God from his dwelling take leave. God sacrifice and it oh now be extended. The fruits of this mass in all hearts who believe. The seed of Christ teaching our inner souls reaching shall blossom in action for God and for all. His grace shall inside us, His love shall unite us to further God's kingdom and answer His call.